Today we have a true portable power station solar generator because it comes with solar panels. They come separately. It does come nicely packed as you would expect. This is the All Powers Model R1500 Lite. Now I am familiar with All Powers. I've tested a model similar to this earlier this year. I liked it, so I have high expectations for this model. Real quick though, I do want to go over the specs. Uh, it is lithium iron phosphate based battery. It weighs 33 pounds. Here's the size. The battery, that lithium iron phosphate battery is 1,056 watt hours. It does have a Bluetooth app, which is what we will be testing as well. So it can do 650 watts solar input and it can do car charging as well. Um, I'm not going to test the car charging, but I will test the solar because it does come with the solar panel. So of course we got to test that. Now to output it does 1600 watts of AC output, 3200 surge. It has USB A and C, which we'll test a little bit. It has a car port, which I will also test. So that's kind of the quick overview. Uh, hang out. Let's jump in and see um, how good this All Powers is. Uh, see if it's the right solution for you. Stay tuned. So I tested this unit extensively for several weeks. So if there's something that you are more interested in, just feel free to jump ahead to that part because um, this is gonna take a while. There's a lot to go over. I'm gonna start with uh, the part I liked the least and that is their app. It shows the basics, um, you know, show power coming in, it shows power coming out. Um, you can turn on the um, level of charging that you want, which I'll get into in a little bit later. Uh, you don't have to sign up or create an account, which I liked, but it's just, it's kind of basic. It's kind of simple. And um, I had trouble connecting with it a fair amount of times. Um, it won't connect, you know, if I was in the other room, uh, even next to it, uh, it wouldn't connect a lot, but it was just okay. I mean, it does the job. It's not a very attractive app. It looks a little dated. So the app was not that great. Really, the app was kind of the worst part of the unit. So we're starting off and we're getting the bad stuff out of the way. Now we're going to jump into something considerably more positive, the capacity. So I ran a 620 watt load on the unit. Of course, the unit was fully charged. I got 958 watt hours out of the 1056 capacity. That's 90% of the capacity. That is incredible. I mean, this is a really, really efficient machine. I was very, very happy with that. It goes down to 5%, then it stops, so you can still use the machine. There's still uh, the lights and everything are still on. So I was very, very impressed with, uh, with that. Uh, I did an overnight test. What I mean by that is about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, fully charged, nothing plugged in. I just turned on the AC button and I wanted to see how much it would use in the morning. So in the morning I came in, it had used 158 watts over basically 12 hours. So it was about 85% of the battery left. So that means when you're doing nothing and the inverter's on, AC inverter, it uses 13.2 watts with no load. So decent considering all of the overhead that the machine is uh, doing. You know, it has a lot of, a lot of thing going on. Now let's jump to AC charging. It has three modes, and this is where you can only change it in the app. You have the fast mode, the standard mode, and then the mute. So on fast mode, you can do 1200 watts. I tested that extensively. It can do 1200 watts. And like all of these lithium iron phosphate based machines, it'll do full charging, half, maybe even 75, 80%, and then it, it tapers it down. So kind of consider it like, bulk and absorption charging for those people who are lithium iron phosphate battery enthusiasts. Uh, Mute lets the least amount of charging in, and I use that a little bit. The only issue I ran into is uh, it has a temperature icon and the temperature icon came on. So it did run a little bit hot, but it runs quiet. When charging at full throttle is 36 decibels. So it's really, really, really quiet machine. It's impressed with that because a lot of the machines I've tested recently are really loud. It's a very, very quiet machine. Now to solar charging. So it comes with the panels. The panels went up quickly. 
And as you can see, I <laughs> folded them out upside down and still, uh, they really go up easily. It's very, very simple to do. Um, I got about 135 watts out of the 200 watt panel when I tested it. That is um, decent. Uh, I didn't test them extensively. Uh, it was a little bit hazy that day. So, you know, you could probably get a little bit more out of them, but uh, decent solar panels. Now you can use other solar panels. You can use up to 650 watts, but you gotta make sure that you stay under 95 volts and under 13 amps. So 650 watts total is what you can use in the system. I didn't test any other panels because all my panels are in use, so I didn't have any extra panels lying around. The only thing is, is it has an XT60 connector plug on the unit. So you will have to get an XT60 to like, let's say MC4 or Anderson, depending on what you have, but you can use other solar panels. Now let's jump into a little bit more of the AC. I did a heavy AC load test and I'll get into more of the details of that in a little bit, but I wanna talk about the sine wave and voltage loss and fan noise. And it did incredibly well on all of those. The sine wave on full load, I had little under 1600 watts coming out. The sine wave stayed pure, no distortion, very, very good sine wave. And there was absolutely no voltage loss. 120 volt out, whether it's idle, 120 volt under heavy load. So I was very, very impressed with that. And then again, back to the quietness, under heavy, heavy output, it's 45 decibel fan. So the unit, whether you're charging or outputting, is very, very quiet. So now to the DC side. Now I don't do a lot of DC stuff. I don't have a lot of DC stuff. So I didn't do extensive testing. I didn't do a DC capacity test, but I did use all of the components. It has this, which is the, what I call the cigarette lighter out. And uh, I ran that fine. Um, it has the USB-A and USB-C. So I charged up a iPhone and an iPad, uh, no problem. So they, they work fine. Um, again, if you're looking for a DC unit, um, I, I'm not the guy because I just don't do a lot of DC stuff, but it, you know, you have four here and the carport. So decent amount of, uh, DC stuff. It did perfectly fine from what I can tell. So now to the heart of the unit, the AC testing. What I did is I brought it into my house and I just used it like the grid was down. I would use it in the living room. I'd run my lights in my living room, my TV, all that stuff. See how it ran? It ran fine. Uh, I did loads of laundry on it. Uh, I made ice in the kitchen. So I would just go from room to room and use it just like I would be using it if it was a power outage and it ran fine. Then I thought, you know what? What's my biggest concern with these portable power stations? Longevity. So what's happened to me in the past is I've tested power stations where I do, you know, a random selection of appliances or tools and I run it for a few minutes and it runs fine. I think, oh, the unit's fine. And then after a couple of weeks, they die. So I wanted to do an extensive long-term test. So I ran heavy loads and some not so heavy loads, but load after load after load. And fortunately in October in um, Oklahoma, it's both hot and cold. So I was able to run a space heater and an air conditioner, <laughs> depending on the time of day. So in the morning, I would run my space heater heavy, that's over 1500 watt load, until it ran down to zero, or you know, in this case, 5%. Then I would charge it back up and I would do it again. And then in the afternoon, when it got warm, I would flip that over and I would run my 8000 BTU air conditioner until it ran down, plug it in, charge it back up. And I did that over and over and over again. And I, and I used it throughout my house. You know, I did the loads of laundry again. Uh, I made ice. I mean, I did everything that you would do over and over and over again, day after day after day, where I would do a heavy load and sometimes not a totally heavy load, sometimes maybe just 800, 900 Watts, but consistent load after load after load. It got very little rest and it would charge. I would charge it back up do it again. And I had very, very few problems. And I'll talk about the few problems I had when I do my summary of what I liked and what I didn't like. But I ran it over and over and over and over again for about 10 days consistently. And uh, it performed perfectly fine. I had, the issues I had were extremely small issues, ran really, really nice. Now, during that, I also used the UPS feature where you can use pass-through. I had it hooked up to my computer, or I should say I had my computer hooked up to the unit 
and the unit plugged in, and then I would pull the plug out of the uh, grid and um, the computer would run fine. So the pass through, the UPS feature works perfectly great. I got lucky, if you want to call it that a few times, and my computer is in my den and my den is still hooked up to the grid. And a couple of times the grid actually went down during it. So I had a, a real live test and uh, not even a flicker. So pass through works perfectly fine. UPS per works perfectly fine. So um, it's a really solid unit. So now to price, and I hate talking about price because price always dates it, but I have seen this unit consistently under $400. So if you're looking for a bargain on this, um, I think you can get it for under $400. Uh, add another 100 bucks or so for the whole kit. You know, that's the panels. So it's a really, really well-priced unit. All right, so I'm sorry this is taking so long, but I just wanted to be thorough. Uh, I'm going to give you my summary now, what I liked and what I didn't like. I'm going to start out with what I liked. I like the performance. It performed well, constantly and consistently. I had very, very few issues. The performance was solid, whether charging or discharging, very, very solid. Uh, and it goes to durability. I used it over and over and over again. I mean, almost two full weeks of everyday use, day and night, day and night, and it performed great. Um, I like the, the display. The display is bright. It's nice, it's easy to see. The layout is straightforward. I like where everything is. I like that these are right here and then plug everything in, whether it's power or solar is over there. Uh, it's just, it's a easy to use unit. Now it comes with a manual as you would expect, but you don't need the manual. I mean, everything is obvious. You got DC, AC, AC button, DC button, turns on and off, plug it into the wall in the back, plug in the solar right there. It's just a very, very simple, simple unit to use. So if you were um, like uh, what I say, like the mother-in-law, if, you know, if you were just a person that had no tech experience and you just wanted a unit in your house just for, you know, backup power or something, this would be a good choice because it's very, very, very simple to use. Now, on the flip side of that, it doesn't have a lot of advanced features, but it's a very meat and potatoes, simple machine that performed well. Another thing I liked about it was the price. I mean, under 400 bucks for a solid unit. So now to what I didn't like, and I already talked about a little bit, the app. The app to me, um, from a design, uh, an engineering, and an actual product level, the app was really the only thing that I didn't like. I think they could do a better job on the app. Um, I think the connectivity could be better. I think the design could be better. Um, I think it could be a better app. That's really the only thing I didn't like that was real. And even that wasn't that big of a deal because it does work. So I would give it like a C, you know, if I was grading it. So it passes, but it was like just not that great. Now, the rest of the things I didn't like about the machine are really just personal preferences. This is more of an editorial. The machine performed superb. It's a very, very solid budget-friendly machine. But what I didn't like about it is it's an awkward size. Um, it can do up to 1600 watts. So it can't run everything in your house. It can run most of the things in your house, but it can't run a toaster oven. It can't run a hair dryer. Uh, it can't run uh, saws. Um, one of the things I did while I was testing it over those few weeks is I ran some of my power tools and it couldn't run my small air compressor. It couldn't run my miter saw. So it couldn't run things like that because it can only output 1600 watts. So it's a little bit small for the whole home. It really needs to be about 2000 for the whole home. But then if you were to buy it for camping, it's kind of big. You know, if you were going camping, you would probably need just, you know, maybe to charge a few devices and maybe have some lights in your tent. So you wouldn't need a unit this big. So I don't understand where it fits in, but that's just me editorializing. That's just my personal opinion. I think, uh, you could use it for um, a power down situation. You know, if the grid was down because of a storm or something, it can run a lot of things in your house. It just can't run every appliance in the house. But the things that it can run, it runs well. I mean, it did uh, space heater fine. I uh, ran my washing machine fine. Uh, it can run a small microwave fine. Um, you know, it can run a lot of things fine. It just can't run everything. And it can't run bigger power tools. So that's really the only thing I didn't like about it, which again, 
it's just my personal preference. It's not a, a, an attack on the machine. I just personally didn't see where it fits in um, because, you know, like I said, it's kind of big to take camping and it's a little small to run everything. But that's it. That's my experience. Um, it was a pleasant experience. Uh, I enjoyed the unit. I think it's a good unit. Um, again, if you're, a, you know, just an average person looking for backup power, um, I think it's something to consider, something to look over and see what your needs really are and will it fit that need? You know, what are the things you really need to run? Because it can only really run about 1600 watts of appliances. So you'd have to think, what do I have in my house that I want to run and will it fit? Uh, the capacity was outstanding. It's quiet. It is just so nice and quiet. I mean, that is just, there's so many of these power stations out there that are just so loud. Uh, the charging was fast. Um, it charged full um, in a little over, it says 90 minutes. I think it was more like a 100 minutes uh, when I would charge it. So it's not quite to spec on AC charging alone, but it's still fast. I mean, the 1200 watts in is uh, pretty good considering that it's only, you know, 12, what is it, 1056 watt hours um, storage. So, you know, the fact that it can do 1200 watts in, it's pretty good charging. So that's about it. If anybody has uh, any questions or if they have a different power station that they like or they want to talk about, please leave a comment below. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Um, and I'll talk to everyone soon.